All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing another 2023 NBA mock draft video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about who I think the Charlotte Hornets should, of course, select at pick 27. A franchise who I low-key have a soft spot for. Again, LaMelo Ball, one of my all-time favorite players, of course, as an Australian I got the pleasure of watching him come to our country and perform really well in our league and, you know, put more eyes overall worldwide on, of course, the National Basketball League in Australia. You know, that was just one of the big things. Other things, including donating a bunch of the money that he made here to the Australian bushfires that happened, all this type of stuff. Overall, Lamelo Ball doesn't get talked about enough as a, a really great guy. In fact, I even actually got the pleasure of meeting him too which was really awesome. He didn't have to do a meet and greet down here in Melbourne, but of course he ended up coming and doing one, I believe, at Foot Locker. So I have a very big, I think, uh, emotional attachment to this Charlotte Hornets team, and I really hope they can do LaMelo Ball right. And I feel like there was a bit of pressure on this pick because Charlotte haven't been good for such a long time now. Like, they fired their coach in the previous season, going back to a coach that they didn't even want, a coach that they had previously, and... Uh, again, a bit of a disaster for the Hornets, among um, other things. Their owner might be sailing, which is probably a good thing. Michael Jordan was has not been a good owner so far in the NBA. A lot of things need to be changed for this team, and hopefully we can start with the draft. And hopefully I have selected a player who will be able to help this team out in the future and benefit them a lot as a basketball team. Now, before we get into it, I would just like to recommend go and check out that vlog if you haven't already. Shout out me for meeting Lamelo Ball and. Yeah, go check out that vlog. I did vlog the experience. It was really awesome. Other thing I would like to mention is, of course, go and check out my official mock draft. Just in case you're wondering why I didn't take a certain player with this pick you probably wanted, it might have just been because I've already taken him with a higher pick to a different team. So go and check out that mock draft just so you guys are all up to date and whatnot. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I guess without further ado, here's who I think the Charlotte Hornets should select the pick 27 in the 2023 NBA draft. I also like the move who I've got at pick 27, who was the player I was actually contemplating if the Pacers should take at 26. And that is actually a power forward, but I just don't know if this player really fits into what this Pacers team has always been and are, but I guess we can wait and see. This could be very interchangeable. But with pick 27, I do have the Charlotte Hornets, and I have them selecting Gregory Jackson, the second, who was a six foot nine, power forward who is a pretty nice offensive player it said that he's a force on the offensive end able to do it all with the ball in his hands he's a pretty explosive powerful player who can shoot from the mid-range and the three ball um really really well there's a lot going on with this game especially on the uh, offensive end sometimes it's said it doesn't exactly take the best shot that's going to be out there but yeah my I think thinking with this and why I didn't take him by the Pacers is because I think there's a big question mark on his defense, which is the Pacers have really, really liked for quite a long time. So I'm not sure he fits there, but I feel like on this Charlotte Hornets team who emphasize a lot on their offense now, I think he'd be a kind of a cool player to put with LaMelo Ball. As you're looking at a dude who can stay on the perimeter, shoot threes, be a pretty nice scorer there. And... I just think kind of work well. You've kind of got it with PJ Washington. Not sure what PJ Washington's career and future is going to be like with this Charlotte Hornets team. That's also another thing that's pretty unclear. I mean, they don't believe they ever re-signed him. There was rumors they were trying to trade him before the season started. But he played good towards the end, so maybe they just bring him back. Then you're looking at Miles Bridges, who I've heard rumors that could definitely be back now that all the charges are starting to go down and potentially dropped. He could be another player. The Hornets are obviously going to try and probably offer a max contract too if everything goes, you know, smooth and dandy. I think he goes back to that small forward position maybe. I wonder if they're thinking to themselves, hold on, does Bridges and Washington work better at the small forward and power forward? Do we just move Gordon Hayward to the bench now and he can play a a similar role to what Kevin Love did, I think, on that Cleveland Cavaliers team for his last couple of years. 
I think that's what they might look at. And then if you do that, then you're moving Hayward back to that small forward position. And you're looking for a backup power forward. You're looking for a backup power forward. There's a dude sitting right there in Gregory Jackson, who's a six foot nine guy, might have some question marks on the defensive end. That's, you know, for sure. But it's been said that he can maybe switch two from four. But what's most importantly is he's really nice with his offensive game and has a good three-point shot, a good mid-range, and he can handle the ball. And I think, yeah, things could be looking up for this Charlotte Hornets team. If they do what I think they should do in this draft, and I think, you know, of course, go and check out my previous video if you haven't already. I explain more in depth about this decision, but at pick four, I had them taking Asar Thompson over Eamon Thompson and Jarris Walker. I think Asar just is one of the best fit players you can put with LaMelo Ball. Whatever LaMelo Ball doesn't do well, which is sometimes, you know, just defense, right? You're looking at Asar Thompson, who can not only score and be a pretty nice shot creator, but is an extremely good defender. I think over time, if Rozier maybe moves to the bench and bees one of the best six men in the league, which could happen. You're looking at a team that's well more improved. You're adding potentially Asar Thompson, Miles Bridges, and Gregory Jackson to this team. You're moving Hayward to the bench. You might be moving Rogier to the bench, whatever it might be. And even if Rogier does continue to start, or Rozier, sorry, you are still bringing in Asar Thompson off that bench, which would be a really nice, important hand. And I just think this works well for the Mallow Ball. If you're going to make the Mallow Ball happy, it's probably by bringing back Washington, bringing in Miles Bridges back to the team, bringing in Gregory Jackson, who would help out, and bringing in, I think, Asar Thompson, which really nice players who just fit this team. And yeah, go and check out my video talking about Asar Thompson. I go even more in depth about why I think this should happen. But of course, if you guys haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest NBA content and NBA news. Don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you guys think what I've done with this mock draft is very good? Do you guys like the picks that I've made and whatnot? Are you guys excited to see how this goes? This will probably be my last one, I think, until I do the update a lottery one because I don't know if I can do any more. I don't think I can cover the second round. There's probably just not enough information to really go over. So I'll probably just... Stay with this first round, and I, I really do hope you guys enjoy it. It's been a wild ride, and I'm pretty... I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty excited that this is the last one. There's been a lot of research, a lot of talking, but it's been all worth it because you guys have been absolutely awesome in the comments and have just been the best fans and terrific people, and the support has just been so great. So definitely go and check out all my other parts. This video will eventually probably be combined into the whole big part of the full first round, which I'm super excited to put together. Probably going to take me 10 years to edit this video, but again, looking forward to it. And I just hope you guys enjoyed this so much. And as I was saying, if you do, comment your thoughts and opinions. Go and subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash long channel. Check out my podcast as well. All of them will be getting linked in the description down below. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.